Hi teachers, welcome to GG Utah and UEN's Open Training on Applied Digital Skills. I am so excited to see you. I'm coming from you from my home office in Northern Utah. Um, I'm excited about sharing this lesson plan with you because it's something that is kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, I've always loved filmmaking. I've always loved watching film and watching animation. I, I was a kid who grew up on, you know, animation shows like Flintstones all the way up through The Simpsons. And creating animation is something that I used to look at as a kid and go, I could never do that. I'm not an artist. Um, I, stop motion is like way above me. I saw Wallace and Gromit when I was a kid and went, that's amazing. Claymation is way beyond me though. Um, but this is something that every student can do. It's got a lot of applications for presentations, for creating in different classes, talking about science and mathematics and really getting the students to think about steps because that's really what we're working on is how do we go through a process of step one to step infinity, whatever it might be, step 20, 20, 30, whatever it might be, and making sure that there's kind of that computational thinking point to point to point all, all the way through. It's a really cool process for students to go through. And again, applying a content to it. So like science, math, English, uh, creative writing, social studies, art, whatever it might be, can, it's really flexible. So understanding the process and then applying it to your content, that's the goal here. And remember, that's the goal of a lot of applied digital skills programs. So if you haven't yet, go back and watch some of the other ones. We had a great one on research writing. We're gonna have some great ones coming up on coding. Um, lots of really cool things going on uh, to dig into some really fun things through Google's Applied Digital Skills program. So with that said, a little bit about me, if you haven't met me before, I'm Matt Winters. I, I'm a trainer at UEN as well as GG Utah's co-leader with Kelly Cannon. I am so excited to be here and working with you today um, or well, digitally whenever you watch this, which is awesome as well. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go for about 30 to 40 minutes, somewhere in that range, depending on how much we get through. I'll always cap it at 40. Um, usually don't go below 30, so just be prepared for that. Um, and what we're going to do is walk you through the entire process of the lesson from Applied Digital Skills, show you how to do every step. And then on top of that, show you some remix, remixes and some options, as well as show you some, some uh, materials that you can just grab and use whenever you'd like to do this in your class uh, with your students, to do it with your teachers, to try it out yourself and maybe make a really cool little animated film. Um, there's been some great stuff uh, use, using Google Slides to create animated films actually for like music videos. So you might wanna check that out as kind of an aside as well. I've seen some awesome stuff over the last couple of months. Uh, I think uh, COVID really got people's creative juices flowing uh, with different technologies, which is kind of cool. Um, so let's jump into it today. What we're gonna work on again is creating animation through Google Slides, um, applied digital skills lesson. And we'll get into that and where you can find that here in just a second. Um, my email is mwinters at uen.org or you can find me on Twitter at teacher winners. Love to work with teachers, love to develop ideas. So feel free to reach out. Um, what I'm gonna do right now is just gonna share my screen. And let's jump in. So this is the site that we're gonna be using for all of these applied digital skills lessons. So even if this is the only one you get into, you're gonna see all of the other ones right here on the left-hand side. So we've done if-then storytelling, building a portfolio with Google Sites, research and develop a topic with Google Docs, and create now, create an animation in Google Slides. You can find that site right here at go.uen.org slash B, lowercase b, uppercase t, the number nine. So again, go.uen.org slash lowercase b, uppercase t, the number nine. Now on top of that, folks, again, here's my information, links to everything that you're working with. If you're not a part of GG Utah, even if you're not a Utah teacher, feel free to join. We'd love to have you be a part of that group. You click this link, it'll take you to it and you're all good. Now these have some quick links to the lesson pages. You'll see updates to that after this video. So you'll probably see more here than I have right there, as well as some resources from uh, UEN on Google, Google's EDU in 90. Um, they update every month. It's a video of most recent stuff and the uh, that's come out in Google. And December actually just came out, uh, I believe last Friday. So brand new video there for you. And then uh, wake a lot of tools from UEN, tons of stuff in there for you. And a lot of tweets that we put out there to help Utah teachers and teachers around the world because we're global, we're, we do stuff with global organizations and we love to work with global teachers as well. All right, where we're gonna spend most of our time today is over here on the left-hand side. We're gonna click on this link right here where it says create animation in Google Slides. So first of all, these two boxes right here link to the same thing, which is the uh, the applied digital skills lesson. And we'll click on those in a minute and I'll show you how to work with those and, and the different things that go on there. So if you click the link or you click the box, you're going to the same location. Underneath that, we have a starter project, which we'll get into here in a minute. So if you've never used 
uh, Google Slides in this way, or if you're like, I need a place for my students to start with, this is a great way to do it. It's a copy link. So when you click it, you'll get a brand new copy of this document. Um, we'll look at that here in a few minutes. We have our lesson resources, which in this case, if you are maybe behind on Google Slides or you need a refresher, this will walk you through uh, all the Google Slides stuff. It's an open training we did on getting prepared for Google Certified Educator Level 1 and Level 2 uh, just about a month ago. So this will walk you through all of that. And then underneath that, we've got some remix options that we'll talk about here in a minute. These are all links to different sites and a copy uh, link to a Google Drawing. I'm going to show you some of those options here in a few minutes and work with you as well. All right, let's start by jumping into the lesson on Applied Digital Skills. So I'm going to click this link, and this is where it's going to drop you is on Applied Digital Skills. So first of all, Applied Digital Skills, you can use this logged in or logged out. Students can use it logged in or logged out. Now, to track progress, to see student work, to have things turned in, you want students to log in, you want to sign in, create your class, those sorts of things. It's a quick process. All you do is click sign in, and it'll walk you through really quickly. Um, if your district is using Google. This is a Google product. So talk to your whoever your technology manager is in the district, but they shouldn't have any problem using applied digital skills in your classroom because it's got a lot of great things. And just as a reminder, what applied digital skills is built around is the idea that we as teachers know our content really, really well. Every teacher I know knows their content really, really well. But sometimes they might not know the technology skills to do cool projects or to help students you know, survive and thrive in the 21st century. And so these lessons help teachers who might not have that technology background to teach technology in a way that allows the students to learn it, but the teacher doesn't need to have really specific content knowledge on it. So it's really nice. Every page is pretty much the same. So you have a big start button right here. Usually there's a picture. This one didn't have a picture for some reason. And underneath it, you have your activities. It's got the time to complete, which digital tools you'll be using. So in this case, search and slides. The, the skills the students are going to be learning and the videos down below that the students are going to be watching. So you can actually go through all those as well as then the contents for the quiz and some extensions on a le lesson. It also has the teaching materials and these are all the videos, um, rubrics, kind of certificates of completion, all of that stuff. And all you have to do is click a download button right there and it's all ready to go. However, they do put some lesson features behind the sign-in. So if you're interested, feel free to click those. Um, like I say, track student progress, adding lessons so students can start working, and classroom code. So works really well. Works great with Google Classroom too. So if you're a Google Classroom teacher, this is a, a great way to have an add-on that works really well. So your students, when they log in, what they're going to do is click start. And what's great about any applied digital skills lesson is over on the right-hand side, it has the instructions for the lesson how to share their work. So if a student signs in, they'll be able to see submitted work or see a place to submit their work. Teachers will see their submitted work. And then it has the video. Videos are can be resized. It can have captions on or off. You can download as a teacher, change the playback speed, do picture in picture, lots of stuff. And what's great is the videos are usually between three and five minutes in length. So not a ton of time for the student to sit and watch, but it goes nice step by step. Now you can kind of see right here on the left-hand side what our project is going to be. We're gonna be creating a slide deck where things change ever so slightly as we go through to create an animation. But how do we make that? How do we make all those different pieces funnel together? So we're gonna create one of these together and uh, give you some ideas to work off of, as well as some slight remixes that I really like as we go through. One thing before we move over to that though, I do wanna point out all the videos are right here. So you've got, uh, I believe it's six pages of videos on this particular lesson. Page seven is your quiz. So when students actually log in and are working through a lesson for their teacher, at the end of it, they get quizzed on the material that they've learned, which is really kind of cool and they get into it. And then also the extensions as well, which I'll show some of those here in a minute. Let's go ahead and get into it though. So I'm not gonna, we're not gonna watch any of the videos. We're gonna do the lesson together. We're gonna walk through all the skills that you need to know to do this lesson in your class. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to this page, our classroom that we've been working on, and we're gonna scroll down to the starter project. Okay, of course, you could just go ahead and open a new tab, type in slides.new, which is one of my favorite hot uh, shortcuts in hotkey shortcuts inside of Google, because when you do that, it just reads your Google account and starts a brand new slide deck. And you can start working off of that. But for the sake of our class, we're gonna use the starter project. So this creates a copy link and we're gonna make a copy of this. And once it opens up, you're gonna see something really great. So 
This is just a template background that I made in Canva. Now you could do this in Google as well, but I like Canva because it gives me a lot more options and features. We're actually gonna go look at Canva in a minute. We can see it's just a background. I can't move it around, but I can add things on top of it. So like, for instance, I can insert an image. I'm gonna search the web. Uh, let's go with chicken. Cool. Uh, I like this guy right here. Insert and see that picture goes on top of everything and it's right there. Now. In here as well, just because it's kind of a, a little side here because this will help us out later. When we add a picture, the format options might not necessarily be open for us as, as, as uh, users. So click on your picture, click the format option button, and you're gonna see all of your options right here. So these allow you to resize, change your position, which you can also do just by pulling it around and things like that. But then also recolor, so I can change the color of my, my chicken right there. I can make other adjustments to transparency, brightness, and contrast. I can add a drop shadow, shadow, or I can do a reflection as well. So lots of really good options there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that chicken because we don't want that right there. But let's say I don't want this tropical background. So I've given you three options in the slide deck for your students and for you. So if you go right here and change apply layout, we've got a little waterfall and a castle, or sorry, a waterfall and some trees, or we have a castle as well. So a couple of options there. Um, and what's great is if we hit duplicate, it's always going to have that same background, which is something we're looking for in this project, but you could do this freeform. So that's why I say slides.new. If you're looking to add a new background, those sorts of things, you can do that. So I'm going to go do that really quickly just to show you one thing. So let's add a new slides. There we go. I'm going to delete the texture because I don't need that, but maybe I, I do want a colored background. So looking at our project here, on applied digital skills, notice that the color changes in the background. So it's dark blue, then light blue. And if we were to go down, it's probably gonna go even lighter blue with the sun coming up. So that's something we might wanna do. So to add a background on this, all you have to do is go to background and then you can choose a color if you want to. You can get a custom color and play with their color wheel, or you can actually choose an image too. So you could do like space or a castle or whatever it might be. So for us right now, I'm just gonna grab that blue, hit done and I'm ready to go with a nice colored background as well, okay? So good, good. We have two different options there. We're gonna keep going with this guy and I'm gonna go with the castle just cause I like castles. We're gonna have a knight come in and we're gonna animate him across the screen, okay? So in order to do that, there's a couple of different ways you could do it. We need a movable piece of, uh, sorry, a, a movable image that's cut out too. So like we don't want white background, we want clear background. So the first thing we're gonna do is we could go right here to insert image or insert up here image, search the web and we could put in, I'm gonna go again for a night. And there's lots of different options here. There's a little clip arty one. There's some like classical art, art ones. There's some metal iron ones. This one's kind of cool right here. That's awesome. But none of these are really striking my fancy. And what's hard is that if I click on any of these, let's go with that clip art one right here. If I click that, Oh, this one has a clear background, which is great because then I can animate him across and I can change his position without covering up my background with a white background. But a lot of pictures, if you add them in, like for instance, this classical one right here, it's gonna have that background and it's gonna cover up anything in the back. And that's kind of hard for students to work with. So one thing I recommend, and I'm gonna have a, a link to a couple options here for you on uh, the website. I didn't put it in there yet, but I'm gonna have a link down below here with some uh, starter characters as well. Um, we're gonna go over to Canva. So if you've never used Canva, it's it's a great program. It's one of those programs that allows anyone, whether you're good at graphic design or not, to make really cool designs. Um, it's free for educators forever. And all you have to do is tell them that you're a teacher and you're at a specific school and you're good to go. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna click create design. and we, they have hundreds of different designs here and we can search those, but I just want a big square. So I'm gonna do a thousand by a thousand pixels. And what that looks like is just that right there. Now I want a thousand by a thousand because it gives me plenty of space. It's gonna be high resolution on my image and I can work with it. So if I go over to elements, so we have templates, we have elements, uploads, text, all sorts of stuff, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do elements and I'm gonna search what I just worked with. I'm gonna go with night. 
and see they have a lot of different options a lot more on clip art than google does and what's nice is that let's say i like this night right here but i don't necessarily love that particular design maybe i want something a little bit they actually recommend a bunch of other ones now sometimes it's great sometimes it's not but in this case i didn't recommend any nights but they have a lot of different ones that are kind of similar in that like there's this night right here there's a little kid with a cape on so we could do like superhero design if we wanted to but also i could grab on and add other things like you know maybe i want a cat oh cool there's a little cat right there maybe i want that cat to move with them so what we're going to do is we're going to create i'm going to keep this design right here by the way some of them move too you can get gifts which are really fun too um, i'm going to resize this guy just fill up the whole screen just by grabbing the corners there we go perfect maybe center him a bit there we go perfect i'm gonna add another page let's let's go ahead and do a cat let's add no well i i'm not really a cat person else. let's do dog mm, let's see i like this guy right here just the top one because he's in an action pose which is always kind of fun with animation to have an action posed piece so grabbed him okay we have two pictures now now notice that we do have that white background so we want to make sure that we get rid of that white background so up here in the top right you're going to see download we're going to keep it on png or you could do jpeg whatever works best for you gif is down at the bottom so if you do want like movable art of a dog wagging their tail in your animation that's full cool but remember we're, we're going to animate this anyway so they're going to move so png underneath it size perfect but notice transparent background so hit that and we're going to do just page one and we're going to hit download and then we're going to go back over to our castle and we'll drag and drop there we go there's our knight and notice he's got a clear background we can put him wherever we want inside this art perfect now let's go back here i'm going to download our our dog really quick same thing we're going to do page two download and there's our dog right there drag him in resize him and we have our puppy as well we can put him wherever we'd like just make sure he's in frame don't drop him off the side but now we have a dog we have our knight so pretty easy to go and grab as many uh art pieces as you want you can go and create as many of these in advance for your students I would recommend having a few, like I'm gonna have on the website, having like three or four different groups of like uh, themes. So like maybe everyday people, maybe some superheroes, maybe knights and uh, monsters or something like that, whatever you'd like, but making sure that you have some options for your students to start with is really cool. Um, and then you can help them to go through the process themselves. Okay, we're gonna look at a remix option down the line on this that will help you to do uh, remove backgrounds where they can animate their own faces, which is kind of cool as well. So we've got these two creatures or two two objects. I'm gonna highlight both of them. Um, you can do that in two ways. We can run over them and click it that way, or we can click one, hold down our control key and click on the other. And then control C is our copy. And we're gonna go back to slide one, control V and control V. And now we can see over here, we have three slides with the same spots now the problem is is that we don't want our character to stay that way we want to animate them and we're going to go for about 15 slides so what well, this is one of the goals of animation is you have to have a plan so talking to your students about a story they want to have a story a plan for them to go through these characters to go through so what i want to do is i'm going to pretend this is my story this guy is being chased the dog is with him, it's his protector. And they are going to run across the screen and run into the castle, getting smaller the entire time, okay? Really simple thing, but it's gonna be kind of fun. So this first one, I want them to both be looking the same direction, which is towards the castle, like they've been running and maybe be partially off screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip using our options here. There we go. There's our flip button right there. And you can see flipped them around. They're both looking the same direction. I'm going to move the dog right in front of him. And I'm going to move both of them a little bit off screen. So just a little bit like that. Okay. So there's number one. Then number two, and actually to make this even easier, I'm just going to copy and paste, delete these two guys. I'm going to copy and paste 
our first slide. So I'm gonna move the second one just a little bit more into frame, maybe a little bit less than that. Perfect. Third frame, same thing. And even though his face doesn't show it, I want them to seem like they're scared. So I want them to turn around. So I'm gonna go ahead, duplicate slide. And from right here, I'm gonna flip them back to look them back. And actually I'm gonna flip him first, duplicate, flip our dog. There we go, okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and duplicate, move both of those back. And now the dog's behind him. And we're gonna go ahead and move them just a bit forward to keep them on page. And then let's duplicate. And then the rest of the slide deck, we're gonna duplicate and kind of move just a little bit and make a little bit smaller. Now, just a quick note, notice that I resized and it kind of went weird because it can go like that. We wanna keep our aspect ratio, okay? Now what an aspect ratio is, is the same size it's what our, our, our uh, objects are right now, the size they are. So if I mess with that and change it to that, it doesn't look very good. So in order to keep that, I'm gonna hold down my shift key and then do that. Because if I try and move it in, you can see it doesn't go very well. So I'm gonna change that a bit, change them up, duplicate, same thing, hold down my shift key, do a little bit more, move them a little bit along, duplicate, Highlight both of them, shift key. You can see how quickly this comes together. So there we go, move them a little bit along. Duplicate, highlight, shift key, smaller, move along. Duplicate. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we're at slide 15 and it looks good. We're almost there. Two more slides. All right, duplicate. Put them right in front of the door, duplicate. And now, because they're inside the castle, delete. Now, every story needs a villain. So really quickly, we're gonna duplicate one more slide and we're gonna go back to Canva. I'm gonna add one more quick design here. And we're gonna add a dragon because why not, right? <coughs> I like this guy right here because he looks completely unthreatening. There we go. That's kind of what I want for the story is a completely unthreatening dragon. All right, same thing, page three, transparent background, download. Go back in here. And on the 15, slide 15 where they go in the castle, let's see, I'm just waiting for it to download. There we go. I'm gonna bring in our dragon, make him come on screen just a little bit. And on the very last one, Drag him in and he's huge. And I'm gonna play with where he's sitting too, just like that a little bit. All right, we've got our story. Now, one, uh, one extra little add-on that Google talks about is also adding text. So like for instance, right here, slide six, they've turned back and they're ready to run off. Let's add a speech bubble. So we can go ahead and click shapes. We want call outs and there's our speech bubbles right there. So I'm gonna add that, I'm gonna draw it. I am going to rotate that so it looks like it's coming out of our heroes or, you know, we don't know if he's a hero, our little knight's mouth. And we can extend that out there. It's kind of cool that we can do that. And then I'm gonna add a little text bubble that just says, come on. Cool. Highlight that text. And then we're gonna change the font. I just want something fun. There we go, make it a bit bigger. Center that guy, there we go, we're ready to roll. Okay, so story so far, knight comes on, knight comes in, looks back in terror, dog looks with him, dog turns back, we go, come on, and they run off and go into the castle and we see the dragon come in, okay? 
really simple. Now you saw that it animated as I went through. So if I just quickly click the down key, it does look like it's animating and they're going in. Okay. But then we get weird cutoffs and we always see them come in and those sorts of things. So we want to actually turn this into something that we can view really quickly. So the first thing is we can just go ahead and hit slideshow and it will cut off those, those edges. So if we go back to the very first one, there we go. And you can see it animates just by us going through it. But that means that somebody has to be presenting it. And I'm not a huge fan of that. I want to, I want my slides to play automatically. So this is where Google steps in and says, okay, we can do this kind of in kiosk mode. We want our students to be able to see something really cool. So if they go up to file, okay, and hit publish to the web. Now, some schools might have this disabled. So just check this feature with your students before you hand them this feature. Know that they can still go back to slideshow. But if they can publish to the web, notice right here that they can have a link or an embed code. And on there, they can choose to have it change in a certain time. So I'm gonna say every two seconds, my slide will change. Slideshow starts as soon as the player loads, restart the slideshow after the last slide. Hit publish, cool. And there's my link. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that link, copy it, control C, control V, paste it, and there we go. It is animated and it's going and it'll continue to go. So as a teacher, you could have your students put these on Chromebooks, animate and put their, their slide deck animated going through and have everyone wander by and actually watch their slide deck as an animation. Now, this is just a simple, fun little storytelling thing that you know you could do in a K6 classroom. You could do this in a secondary creative writing classroom, whatever you'd like. But think about this for science. Let's explain an experiment, something that's happening with neutrons or electrons or protons. In English, let's look at different examples of storytelling. In math, what are the steps to solve a math problem? Uh, in art, let's create crazy designs and have it play in order and like kind of create this amazing effect. Social studies, journey across a map. Um, music, what notes are being played in which order on a piano or on a bassoon? Um, even in physical uh, education, what are the, how does an exercise work and what is the exercise routine slide by slide animating it through? So there's lots of different applications for this, this idea. Again, here's the technology that we've worked with. Now apply it to your content, what works really, really well for you, okay? So that is right there, animation through Google Slides in a nutshell. Let's go look at some of the remix options though. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out my awesome, amazing website. And remember that stays published forever. So the students can actually take that link, send it home and your parents can watch it. You could create a playlist of these and all the students could share them out and it can be as many slides as they want. So they could tell a hundred slide story animating the entire way through and make it super complicated. Or they can do like we did in 10 minutes, a simple story of uh, a knight running across the screen being chased by a, a lovable dragon. So very, very fun. All right, let's look at some remixes. So again, right here, GG Utah lesson resources, you got your, uh, the video right here to walk you through everything you need to know about Google Slides, but underneath that you have your remix options. So remix option number one is Google Drawings. So if you haven't ever used Google Drawings, this is a copy link right here to try Google Drawings and it'll allow you to make a copy. It works very similarly to Google Slides and then it looks like Google Slides. You have some drawing tools. But what's nice is that it, it creates a static image of what you're creating. So like for instance, let's say I drew like a, an amazing picture of a, a troll or something like that for my, my uh, fantasy story. Well, then I could download that as a PNG or I could add uh, text bubbles to it really easily as well. And then I can add that without a background over to my slide deck. So it gives students a little bit more free form. And one of the things that is lovely in here is another drawing tool right here. There's Scribble. So the students can actually draw a really cool, you know, I'm terrible at art. So really cool little like figure or idea or piece of art that then they can use in their animation and kind of customize it. Um, so definitely give that a shot, give it a try, see what you can come up with. Um, Google Drawings is, is super fun. Now on the flip side of that, going back to our remix options, there also is this great website called sketch.io. This is one of my favorites, um, requires no login. 
but it does allow users to download their work in PNG and JPEG. So you, then you can, with a ba without a background, so you, students can customize their work and then download it and put it onto a slide deck really easily. So right here, go ahead and click English. Unless you're another language speaker, then you can click whatever one works best for you. I was playing with this earlier today, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can find the erase key. It's been a while. Uh, let's just go ahead and... Oh, there we go. Boop, boop, boop. Um, delete. Sorry, I'm just going to delete everything I was working on. So this is, you're seeing me work in real time there. There we go. So basically, you get a blank canvas. And you can crop and resize your canvas. You can draw using a variety of brushes. So path and line, spray paint. You can draw with fur, which I, I think is just super fun. So students can draw fur on things. They can uh, also draw sketchy, spirograph, all those sorts of things. They can change the colors and how the colors are done. So I'm gonna do disco with a, let's do sketchy. And you can kind of see it kind of creates this weird fun image but then also on top of that i can change my color so if i want red there we go cool i can change my line width and spread i can draw different shapes and they have many pre-made shapes i can add cartoons to it and then also tons of text option and vector fills so this allows students to have a little bit more options as far as drawing and then as far as downloading right here they hit export and then they can download in these different varieties with JPEG and PNG. So I'm just gonna go to JPEG. And then let's go back over to my creation here. Let's actually put this on the slide with the dragon. There we go, cool. And then you can see. Now I have a background there, but if I go back to Sketchpad, click Save, um, there's some options for you to do no background as well. So, and if students have a hard time with that, that gives us our third option, which we'll get into in a second. So this is just another option for students to create. Um, I've seen some really great usage. Dan Ryder showed me how to use this with uh, comic creation. I've seen it for sketch noting. It's just a fantastic versatile little tool that you can really work with as a teacher and a student to build some really cool graphic work that can then play into comic books, into animation, into classwork, whatever it might be. All right, number three, this is where it gets kind of fun. So I said earlier, there is a way that you can have your students animate themselves if they're willing to take pictures on their cell phone and then send them to themselves. The problem with cell phone pictures is that oftentimes it has a horrible background behind them and we don't know how to get rid of that background. For a long time, the only way to do that was through either an expensive filter or an expensive program or it was through uh, knowing how to use like Photoshop or Lightroom to get rid of a background. Well, there's this great website that came out about four years ago called remove.bg. It's totally free, no login required. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it here. All you have to do is drag and drop, and I'm gonna grab a picture really quick. I'll actually just grab my picture. There we go. There it is. There's my social media picture right there. Drag and drop right there. It's gonna remove my background. And notice that it gets really good in on like even things like hair around my beard right there and up here at the top. It's not perfect. There's some I put in there that it comes out looking a little uh, problematic uh, in terms of quality. But for the most part, this is great. And if I hit download, now I can go back to my, my project. I'm gonna delete my dragon. And instead, I'm gonna make it look like he's running from me. So drag that in here. I'm gonna tilt that just a bit. Make me a bit smaller. And then on the final one, let's go ahead and do that again. And on this one, I'm just gonna go completely 90. Boom. Put me in about right there. Maybe a little bit down just to match my shoulders. And there we go. And now we have a, a completely different take on that story. I would run from a giant floating head of myself as well. But that's remove.bg. It's a great way to get students to animate themselves and do stop animation with themselves, maybe explaining a project, maybe explaining a concept in your class, doing mathematics, those sorts of things to walk through the process. So it's just another way of doing the project of creating animation in Google Slides in a way that uh, makes it more personalized, makes it more exciting for the students. So definitely recommended to try that out, dig into it. And by the way, I just wanna say like, right here where I put my own picture in here, I would do this with my students. One of my favorite things that I've ever done with students is 
I gave my a picture of me and said, uh, make me a holiday picture with that. This was in a yearbook class. And I got back some of the funniest, craziest pictures of myself that were all respectful. Um, and it's just a fun way to kind of get students excited about what's going on in the classroom and, and to, to, you know, poke a little fun at yourself <laughs> throughout the year with your students because they appreciate that. All right. With that said, uh, we're closing up here, folks. So you've got, again, the whole lesson here to hand off to students and apply digital skills, either with a login or without. The link's right here and a link below. Start a project to, with the background so that students don't need to worry about a background. They've already got that covered. The Google slide rest, uh, training and then the remix options down below to work with. So definitely check out all of these um, and check out the other lessons too. If you're really a fan of anim creating animation, if then storytelling is not a big jump. It's also in slides and super fun to do. Creating a portfolio with your students in your classes is great. And then if you're a research writing teacher or you teach research in your class, doing a research paper with Google Docs is super exciting. It has a ton of options in here for doing uh, different projects as well with coding and things as well, checking validity on sources, which is nice. All right, with that said, folks, uh, you can find all these resources at go.uen.org slash lowercase b, uppercase t, number nine. Again, go.uen.org slash lowercase b, uppercase t, number nine. My email is uh, mwinners at uen.org, or you can find me on Twitter at teacherwinners. And you can also find all these materials on GG Utah. If you haven't been to GG Utah really quick, just for the last 30 seconds of the, the video here, um, this month in December, 2021, we are offering a holiday gift guide. The trick is, is all the gifts are free for teachers, uh, lesson plans, materials from all the trainings we've done this year, as well as lesson plans from our, our leadership. Shout out to uh, Kelly Cannon, Deanna Taylor, Emma Moss and Ian Davey from all over the state of Utah who helped out with this project, who are a great leadership team on there. And they have tons of material on here for you to do things with your students this winter, next winter, 10 years down the line, hopefully, because these products will hopefully be around as well then. But then also, if you're interested in helping develop your own uh, yourself doing some professional development, great things for getting certified as a Google educator. All the Google Applied Digital Skills lesson plans are here. And then we've also curated a bunch of ideas, lesson plans, and different things from around the internet. So check that out down below as well. That's all on GG Utah. Um, find that by searching Google or just clicking on the link here to join GG Utah leader. You'll find it right there. All right, with that said, next week, folks, we're gonna be doing some, well, actually we're gonna take a break until after the new year. When we come back, we'll be doing some stuff with coding and applied digital skills, as well as looking at some of my favorite lesson plans uh, with Google Earth. So check that out. We'll see you in January. Thanks so much, folks. Take care. We'll see you then.